and welcome to Trail Mix here at Gaze at the National Parks, the podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Dusty. Trail Mix is the short format episodes here at the show. It allows us to dive deeper into the topics we didn't get to cover in our long format episodes. And today's Trail Mix is all about the science behind the formation of the Grand Tetons. We'd like to acknowledge that the lands, also known as Grand Teton National Park, are the traditional and stolen lands of the Eastern Shoshone, Shoshone Bannock, and Cheyenne people. Okay, so what do you know already about the Grand Tetons? What I know already is what I learned from Becky Lomax. Same. Is that the Grand Tetons feel like someone sort of threw them there as an afterthought. Sort of like the city of Chicago feels like an <laughs> East Coast city was thrown by a giant into the Midwest. Into the Midwest. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Becky saying like, and out of nowhere, those just kind of shot up. And yeah. And I was like... Huh. She obviously knows a lot more science and geology of that area than I do. Specifically, Becky Lomax is a dear friend of ours that Mm -hmm. we got to hike with in Glacier National Mm -hmm. Park. She also wrote the Moon Travel Guide to Glacier, also to Grand Tetons and Yellowstone, and also the Moon Travel Guide to all of the national parks. And the road trip to the Rockies. That's right. She's done a bunch. She's done quite a few. Mm -hmm. We highly recommend her books. Yes. But yes, that was really all I knew. And that it was near Yellowstone. But that was really all I knew. Me too. So how did the mountains, also known as the Grand Tetons, come to be? To get this answer, let's first dive into the geological formation of mountains, or mountains' origin story. At best, the word mountain is a nonspecific catch-all term for natural, elevated portions of the Earth's surface, usually rising over 900 feet. But mountains are extremely specific in their creation and development, and like plants, animals, and people have fascinated scientists for centuries and are still consistently studied and monitored. There's so many factors at play for how mountains are formed, and they often carry with them visible signs of their own creation. Thanks to these signs and the research on so many peaks from all over the world, scientists have been able to not only understand the geological history of a given mountain or its range, they've also been able to begin to understand and document the geological history of our planet and its surface. Mm. I just wanted to take a moment to pause to say how incredible and amazing our planet is and that we have to do everything we can to like preserve it. Yeah, because we made a big old mess. We made a and big now old it's our job mess and it is it. our job to fix it. Because ain't nobody here to come fix it for us. No. Mm-mm. Nope. Nope. This research has determined five common types of mountains found across the world. The first is volcanic mountains. These are formed when magma from inside of the earth erupts as lava out of a hole in the earth's crust, bringing with it rocks and ash and smoke, which begin to build up a mountainous peak over time. Examples of volcanic mountains include Mount Fuji in Japan and Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. Next are dome mountains. Dome mountains are formed when magma and molten rock push the surface of the earth up, creating a dome shape. In these cases, the magma never erupts. So in essence, the potential for volcanic activity causes it to form, but then nothing is ever erupted. An example of dome mountains are the Black Hills of South Dakota. Next are Plateau Mountain. These are not created by an internal activity of the earth. These are usually carved by rivers and streams and are a byproduct of erosion. An example of Plateau Mountains are the mountains of New Zealand. Next are Fold Mountains, and these are the most common. Fold Mountains are created when two tectonic plates collide into each other and the edges crumble, creating folds over each other. It's like if two cars were to crash head on. The hood is going to smash in and make folds, and that is how we get fold mountains. And this can happen for thousands of miles, creating giant mountain ranges. The Swiss Alps are an example of fold mountains, as well as the Himalayas. And finally, the last category, fault block mountains. These mountains are formed when faults, or cracks, in the earth cause the earth's surface to move either upward or downward. When land shoots up, the surface breaks apart into chunks or blocks forming block mountains, or horsts. (laughs) Horsts. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, geology is full of great words. Mm-hmm. An indicator of this type is a very steep front side and a more sloping back side. And one of the best examples of fault black mountains is the Grand Tetons. Okay, but seriously, 
How cool are mountains? Mountains are the coolest. And I just want to climb every mountain <laughs> and forge <laughs> every stream. I think it's Ford every stream. Ford. The, I want to afford. The musical theater person like me is coming out. I'd like to afford every stream. <laughs> you would like to Honda Accord every That's stream. That's right. And follow every rainbow. Until you find your dream. Until I find my dream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I did not know that there were so many types of mountains. I didn't either. Dome mountains, volcanic mountains, fold mountains, plateau mountains, and fault block mountains. It just goes to show you the natural world is expansive and beyond the comprehension of what we were taught in school. What we were taught. Yeah. You know what's funny is like I don't ever remember learning like five the five types no, of mountains no. at all i remember learning other things yeah you know i mean i could tell you what pemdas is or <laughs> <laughs> pemdas the order of operations that's right <laughs> or um or the order of all of the planets right yeah certainly yeah uh but no i my very enigmatic mother oh enigmatic is, was it enigmatic oh no. I, it was educated for oh, me my very in my educated. little school. In my little school. <laughs> my very educated mother. Just served just, us nine pies. That's right. Mm-hmm. But now we can't say pies anymore no. because Pluto is no longer included. No. Sorry, girl. Mm-hmm. Um, just served us knives. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that either. <laughs> that doesn't work. Sure. You said knives? Yeah. Which starts with a K. Damn it. <laughs> 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 the Grand Tetons are North America's youngest mountain range, but they are made up of and expose North America's oldest rock. Let's start with the very old rock that dates back 2.7 billion years ago. That's right. That was billion with a B. This rock is called Nice, spelled G-N-E-I-S-S. This was created when sediments at the bottom of the seafloor mixed with leftover debris from volcanic activity and then got buried underneath a collision of two tectonic plates. Now, other than the forming of this nice rock, this collision had nothing to do with the forming of the Grand Tetons. Had it, what kind of mountains would they be, Mike? Fold mountains. That's right. (laughs) Look at me, listening. 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 Can't spell knives, but can listen. (laughs) Then about 200 million years later, a.k.a. 2.5 billion years ago, molten magma started to seep into the crack of the gneiss. And when it cooled and crystallized, it created igneous granite. After this, around 775 million years ago, the Earth's surface began to get stretched north and south, creating cracks in the gneiss and in the granite. These cracks got filled with molten magma, forming dikes of rock called diabase. Gneiss igneous granite and diabase can still be seen by visitors in the Grand Tetons today. After this, for about 600 million years ago, deposits of sedimentary rock, sandstone, limestone, and shale formed layers over this area. Then about 100 million years ago, the tectonic plate called the Farallon Plate began to move under the North American Plate. Imagine a piece of land floating under the surface of the Pacific Ocean started to slide up under North America. That's essentially what was happening. The shift under the Earth went on for about 90 million years and caused the land to be stretched from west to east and started to thin out the Earth's surfaces. This caused earthquakes and cracks, or faults, in the Earth's surface, thus creating the Teton Fault. For some context, the Appalachian Mountains formed about 300 million years ago, and the Rocky Mountains formed between 50 and 80 million years ago. The Grand Tetons formed about 10 million years ago. Now, Mike, I want you to imagine a fault in the earth. Too boastful. <laughs> Describe what it looks like in your imagination. A fault, I feel like, for me, like is reminiscent of a canyon. Just like not as wide. Like that's what I would feel like a fault mm-hmm. in the earth would be like. Like an underground canyon. I see. To me, when I think of faults, and I think this is probably, you know, just like, Hollywood films and animated TV Mm -hmm. when I was a kid. I think of like the earth cracking open and people falling inside of it. Right, right. right? Canyon-like. Sure. But it's like a vertical, like a straight up and down kind of fault, right? Apparently, the most accurate way to visualize a fault of the earth is to think of the fault being diagonal rather than straight up and down. All right. 
So if we're looking at Grand Tetons from the south, picture mm. the fault. Today's episode of Gaze at the National Parks is sponsored by TrueFire.com, the planet's largest and most comprehensive selection of online guitar lessons, according to Guitar Player Magazine. TrueFire's interactive learning tools and massive library of over 50,000 video lessons help guitarists ignite their technical skills, harmonic knowledge, rhythm playing, and soloing. Over 2 million guitar players worldwide learn, practice, and play with TrueFire. Using TrueFire's desktop and mobile app, Guitarists work with multi-angle HD video lessons on any device, anytime, anywhere, and at their own pace. TrueFire's style-specific learning paths guide guitarists every step of the way. Use the assessment tools to find your starting point, then follow the lesson recommendations and track your progress as you work through your personalized TrueFire study plan. And TrueFire's educators are the best in the biz. From Grammy Award winners to world-renowned artists, TrueFire students have access to an unparalleled faculty of over 300 top-notch blues, rock, jazz, country, and acoustic guitar educators. Guitar players can progress faster with private one-on-one -on -one instruction, group lessons, multi-track video jams, live streams, song lessons, premium tracks, and so much more. With thousands of five-star reviews from amateur and pro players alike, you'll find yourself in good company with the world's most comprehensive guitar learning platform. So grab your guitar and ignite your musicality. Visit TrueFire.com and use code GAZE for your free 30-day all-access trial and 50% off your first purchase. That's TrueFire.com slash GAZE. And that's GAZE, G-A-Z-E. As a forward slash in the earth. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Going from like the upper left to the lower right. Fascinating. Right. I never thought to think of it this way. No. Mine's blown. But I think it helps us make sense with what's about to come next. 10 million years ago, an earthquake caused the land on either side of the Teton Fault to move. The land to the west began moving upward, and the land to the east began to move downward along the fault. This formed a group of block mountains and a valley that we now also call the Grand Tetons and Teton Valley. When this happens, it exposes things called fault scarps, which is a small piece of land that looks like a step that happens when land vertically moves past one another. Scarps. I'm I'm so sorry. I'm not going to be able to go to the party later because I'm just going to be at home fault scarping. Well, I got a bad <laughs> case of the scarps. I got a bad <laughs> case of the scarp. God, I, I had to look at that word like seven times and I was like, Maybe this was... I'm washing my hair a, and I have the scarps. <laughs> I have the scarps. <laughs> and I can't I'm come. getting a bad case of the scarps. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, maybe this is a typo here in this resource here on NASA. I was <laughs> reading it from NASA at the time. And I was like... Say NASA and then I, again. NASA. You're so smart. <laughs> and then I was like, well, let me look this up further. But no, fault scarp is a... Mm -hmm. It's like it's scree. A term. Yeah, it's like scree, but really it's like a... No, I mean in that it's a term that we were it's unfamiliar with. It's a term with. we were unfamiliar with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scarps and Scree. That would be the name of my... Um, your your my band? Design, no, my designer line of clothing. Scarps, Scarps and Scree. scree. Mm -hmm. It oh. would be like Harry Potter formal wear. <laughs> Harry Potter <laughs> formal wear. <laughs> Scarps and Scree. It would be wizard scree. formal wear. Scarps and Scree. <laughs> Scarps and Scree. I got this down at Scarps and Scree. Excuse me. First... Professor McGonagall, before I turn in my assignment, I would just like to show you all my brand new cape. From Scarps my, and Scree. My brand new cloak that I got from Scarps and Scree. Right? It, it works. It totally works. <laughs> it totally works. After one side shot up and the other receded downward, another major event happened about 8 million years later. Can you guess? Was it the eruption of the Yellowstone? That caldera? is correct. Look at if me. If you are thinking of that, yes, the eruption of the Yellowstone caldera, you are correct. When Yellowstone erupted about 2.1 million years ago, it covered most of North America in volcanic ash. We covered this entire event and science of supervolcanoes earlier this season in our trail mix, Super Volcanoes. Super Volcanoes. Published on September 27th, 2021. 
This volcanic eruption added to the geological events that shaped the Tetons. Another major player in shaping the Grand Tetons were glaciers. Ice Age glaciers from around 200,000 years ago also helped to form the Teton Valley. The most recent glacial advance on the Tetons occurred about 50,000 years ago, and they didn't recede until about 12,000 years ago. Moraine, which is the rocks and debris left over from glaciers, can be seen circling Jenny Lake and has made way for forests and trees to grow and thrive. In the 9 million years since the formation of the Tetons, there has been between 25,000 and 30,000 feet of displacement between the Tetons' highest peak and the valley's lowest point. That is about one foot for every three to four hundred years. Thus, the Tetons are still growing. And with every earthquake that happens under the Earth's surface, they grow a little bit more. And since the Tetons are, all things considered, a young mountain range, they are more susceptible to destruction. They are the most vulnerable to the elements and to processes like erosion caused by weather, water, and wind. So when you go to the Grand Tetons, look down, notice the rock around you. Most likely, it's over two and a half billion years old. You can see the nice rock because of the dark and light colored swirls, and you can see the fault scarp at the base of Rock Chuck Peak. The signs of its history and creation are still there, and they are still visible. The sources for today's trail mix come from NASA's Earth Observatory, the NPS, the book Creation of the Teton Landscape, the Geological Story of the Grand Teton National Park by J.D. Love and John C. Reed Jr. of the U.S. Geological Survey and the Wyoming State Geological Survey. And let's end this trail mix with a game. Okay, Mike, are you ready for this game? Y'all know I am. So I'm not going to lie. I was inspired by a game that I, it was the Jeopardy category Mm -hmm. that we played, I think, season one. Oh, And it's one of your favorites. Yeah. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Girl, you better know your North American mountain ranges. You nailed it. Yeah. I'm just on fire this episode. (laughs) This is called, girl, you better be able to geologically identify your North American mountain ranges. (laughs) I knew you'd be excited about this. I have a list of about 15 mountains and mountain ranges of North America. Notice we didn't use any of these examples earlier in the trail mix Mm. so that we could save them for this game. I see. For torture later. Yes. You just have to tell me if they are either volcanic, Mm -hmm. fold mountains, dome mountains, Mm -hmm. fault block mountains, Mm -hmm. or plateau mountains. Great. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Mount Rainier. What is volcanic? That is correct. Mm -hmm. You know how I know that. <laughs> because I also did something similar. We did I did a game about mountains at some you point. You did. You did. And, and you said, was, is it a is mountain it vol- or, or is a it a volcano? volcano. So this, this is before this was before I knew the five types of mountains. That's right. Well now you know. But now I know. Okay. Knowing is half the battle. So the Rocky Mountains. What are um what are fold mountains? That is correct. Mm-hmm. Half dome in Yosemite. What is a dome mountain? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well done. The Sierra Nevadas. What is a fold mountain? Incorrect. I'll give you a second guess. What is a fault block mountain? That is correct. A fault block mountain. The Appalachian Mountains. What are fold mountains? That is correct. Great. The Smoky Mountains. What are fault block mountains? Incorrect. What? Smoky Mountains are a part of the Appalachian Mountains, and oh. therefore they are... Fault block. No. Fold. Fold. <laughs> Fold Mountains. The Catskill... Fault block. <laughs> <laughs> the Catskill Mountains. Um, what are... What are volcanic mountains? Incorrect. Oh. What are Plateau Mountains? Oh, okay. Yes. I wouldn't have guessed that. Plateau Mountains are right, literally carved just by wind and water. carved by water, erosion, mm-hmm. wind, weather. Right. Green Mountains... Like what the are, ones what we are went fault to. block mountains? Incorrect. What are fold mountains? That's right, because mm-hmm. they're part of what? They're part of the Appalachian That's Mountain right. range. That's mm-hmm. right. White mountains. What are fault block mountains? Incorrect. What are fold mountains? That's right. Because <laughs> they're part they of the Appalachian, Appalachian Mountain range. <laughs> the Adirondacks. What are <laughs> what are fault block mountains? No. <laughs> what are 
um, plateau mountains. Incorrect. What are fold mountains? Incorrect. What are volcanic mountains? No. You what only got one more. <laughs> what are um, plateau mountains? No, you said that, that already. Dome. They're dome. dome. The Adirondacks are dome mountains, right. which means <laughs> that volcanic activity shaped them into domes, but nothing ever erupted. Got it. And finally, <laughs> the mountains of Acadia. Oh, I'm going to say that they are dome mountains as well. Incorrect. They are volcanic mountains. Wrong. They are waffle mountains. <laughs> <laughs> they are fold mountains. fold mountains. They are part of the Appalachian, the, uh, the Appalachian <laughs> Mountains. <laughs> This has been Trail Mix by Gaze at the National Parks, the podcast, and we're here to remind you to hike early and hike often, and that adventure is always out there. Gaze at the National Parks was created and is hosted by us, Dustin Ballard and Michael Ryan. To see images from this episode, follow our Instagram at Gaze at the National Parks. To contact us, email us at gaze at the National Parks at gmail.com. And to find out more about the parks visited on this show, visit our website, gaze at the National Parks.com. That's Gaze, G A Z E. All original artwork featured on Instagram, on our website, and in the Gaze Shop is by me, Michael Ryan. All original music was written by Dave Seaman and performed by Dave Seaman, Mariella Klinger, and Sean Sklios. Our music producer is Skylar Fortgang. This episode was edited by me, Dustin Ballard. We would also like to acknowledge that while recording this episode, that we are on the traditional and stolen lands of the Lenape people, also known as Ocean County, New Jersey. 